like to welcome back vigilant listeners. Today we are looking into a topic that is impactful as it is undeniable. Elections do have consequences. The decisions made at the ballot box reverberate through every aspect of our lives. So grab your seat and tune in because today on Vigilant, we are about to tell you the real impact of those voting decisions. Strap in because this ride is about to get informative. Just before we go into what we have today, let's take a moment to reflect. How many times have we had that familiar refrain, your vote matters? Well, spoiler alert, it does. And in today's episode, we are pulling back the curtain to review just how much. Because here on Vigilant, we believe in one simple truth. Elections have consequences. Yeah, once more, you're welcome back. You're welcome back to the Vigilant Podcast. And today's episode, just like I've said earlier, we are talking about the consequences of election. And I have with me here, Mr. Odiawa and Grace. Last episode, we discussed about the mass failure in UTME exam and how bad it was. And today, we think this is something that concerns the general public. A year plus ago, we were, we were facing the frenzy of the general elections. Everyone had their hopes in their different candidates. At the end of the day, yeah, the victor was announced and what we do? Okay, let's go on with it and see how it goes. They said he's the man with hope and yeah, okay. Let's try and believe and see if there will be any good outcome. And so far, so good. I don't know if I should say that we went from frying pan to fire. I don't know if that's right to say, but we have recorded so many things, starting with the economic reforms that didn't actually favor the conditions of, of Ni- Nigerians. So many companies folded, so many left, and these are people that are important to Nigerians and to the growth of the economy. Am I talking about things that happened months ago? Just last week, few weeks ago, most of us were trekking. If eventually you should be transported to work, you have to pay higher than usual because of fuel scarcity. And they came up with so many things. It's logistics, it's mobility. Thank God there is improvement, but what is happening is still happening. And we don't know if more is to come for us. But what I'm trying to say is that thus far, we have not seen any improvements. I have not seen, I don't know about you people, but I have not seen any improvement. It seems like we are taking like so many steps backward. And uh, that's why I think that this is a good topic of discussion. They say that opportunity comes but once. Yeah, we, we do hear that opportunity comes but once. But no, elections in Nigeria do come every four years so if you should have an opportunity in the next four years to cast your vote what decision are you going to make i believe as you listen to today's podcast you will have one or two things to go home with thank you so much and let's proceed mr diawa and grace you're welcome to the show thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you welcome and uh, let's go forward to what we have we, we've said that elections have consequences. So many people might not understand from where we are coming from. So it's better we make it crystal clear. Let's understand where we are coming from. What do you mean? What do you mean that elections have consequences? So um, when you hear when you hear it that yeah, elections do have consequences. What comes to your mind? What comes to your mind? Yeah, Mister Diawa, can I have you say something? When we say elections have uh, consequences or the consequences of elections, it mm-hmm. involves the choices the electorate actually make on that election day. For instance, now some people buy their future by bringing in the next government for like maybe a thousand naira. And if you split that thousand naira 
I don't know how it can extend to the next 365 days, judging into four years, <laughs> running into four years. So these are the consequences we should look at. Because it's fine, it's a civic responsibility. Every citizen ought to like, you know, indulge in on election day. Why? Because there's a manifesto on ground from each candidate, be it yeah. at the local, state or federal level. Yeah. Now a question whereby these days politicians do not have uh, a manifesto, but they come with laudable promises. Mm. which they don't even fulfill for the next four years. And it's a case of uh, the citizens suffering or bearing the brunt at the end of the day. Why? Because of policies which they just wake up and implement. But the election on its own part, on a positive note, is a good thing. Why? Because it gives uh, the people to exercise in a majority rule system of government, which is democracy, to say, okay, yes, we don't like your system of government. Let's try another person. Let's try another party. So it actually checkmates what they call anarchy, which is the opposite of democracy, system of lawlessness. Mm. So once there's election, which is an ingredient for any democracy, I want to believe there's stability. Okay, you you said something about manifesto. Manifesto used to be this catchy and intelligent, but if I can remember, the manifesto of this present administration is titled Emilio Con. It is my turn. So it's actually, I don't, I didn't even know that um, Nigeria was practicing or is practicing monarchical system of government when it is your turn and you have to be there or no one else. Okay, let's go on. We we actually get somewhere. Grace, what do you have to say? <laughs> I think I'll say it though. Yeah, uh, discussing the consequences of election is very significant. So, like, it reminds us of our democratic and responsibility right as a citizen and the impact that our collective uh, choices we have to do or going a long way in shaping the uh, society, shaping the future of our community and the nation. So, just as you have said, he talked about the choices we make so election decide big changes Mm -hmm. election decide big changes imagine you choosing a leader for a group your your group Mm project like uh, let's bring it down to uh, just our Mm -hmm. own level now so the person you pick will decide what the project will will look like or the outcome of the project Mm -hmm. so similarly the uh, is similarly to election to the people you choose decide the big things for our communities yeah. and our country so like what law we have like like the kind of law we have the kind of um the tax expense the the school the like let, let me just say in general the hope they have for all the dreams they have for mm-hmm. the community so the choices we make uh determines the uh, the, uh dreams they have for for us yeah that's that's correct you people have made fights a good contribution and what people don't realize is that election is a fundamental right yes i've seen i've i've heard about impeachment but never have i seen it work well in nigeria so you cannot say eh, when he gets there if he if he doesn't perform well we just impeach him when was the last time you heard about a president being impeached in nigeria so i i just see election as that one opportunity that citizens the common man one opportunity that they have to make a change and if you misuse it you have to suffer or going to what comes with that administration for the next four to eight years because (laughs) it's become typical of nigeria (laughs) nigerian politicians that once you go for the first tunnel uh, definitely you're going to complete the second tunnel so we are saying four years in order to make it look not so weightier, just a mind that so your mind will not keep skipping. But we actually know that it's going to be eight years. But let's just give you that hope. Let's not be afraid. We are going forward. And uh, I would also like to ask, I would also like to ask, what are the implications of voter turnout and political participation for democratic process? When you tell people, you know, like 
so some people don't believe that their vote will actually count they will tell you at the end of the day they will just do what they want why am i going to there to go and stress myself you want me they, there will be a stampede they will do blah 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 they throw t- and they will throw tear gas and like so many things to discourage themselves from participating but they don't want to look at the importance they don't believe that if one person obianu ju okk should vote mm-hmm. that it has added plus one to the number of voters so what what do you think what do you think are the implications of people that that um have this kind of mindset okay uh in my own point of view i would say it keeps leader in check like when people come out to vote it gives this uh, uh candidate or the prospective um uh governor or yeah. president yeah. Uh, that people are actually working and uh, watching rather mm. like eyes are on you like if four of us vote for one person mm. okay this is the person we are voting for so you as the prospective uh, uh leader you want to put yourself in check that oh these people are and uh, i think there's a word i don't i don't know if it was a biblical word mm-hmm. to who much is given much, much is expected. expected so it's put them in check then it keeps democracy heady so uh, because the kind of um, uh, democracy we run we 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 put it in on election we base it on election so we are not running or uh, is a military rule again so it's it makes democracy healthy mm. whereby uh, people have to contest so you it, you're like it makes the citizens voice to be heard who to rule so your voice is is actually a, a accountability too So, that is what so I when, I, when I was talking about turnout, you know, it's a two-way thing. Okay. It might be a poor turnout okay. when people do not actually come out in their numbers. Voting to come out. Party. At the other hand, and it's, it's a, it might be a good turnout when people, like what we saw during the last election, mm. most Nigerians, surprisingly, most Nigerians came out to cast their vote. And okay. I, I can say that that's a good turnout. So what you said is actually in line with a good turnout. Okay. But what happens... Coming down to yes, voter party. Okay, yes, exactly. Yeah, coming down to voter party. Uh, I think that it has... Even when you are even saying that people came out, if statistics will still show that Many people that did not vote are still more than people that voted. I, if you really want to go into statistics, that's just the truth. Okay. So, do you understand? Uh, yeah, so, you. when people, uh, when citizens did not go out to vote, then it gives us uh, any how leader, any how leader that uh, because we already have this notion in our head that our vote don't count, but actually our vote count. Mm-hmm. So, it gives us gives us any how leader that. Uh, uh this this is not the, this is not their vote i don't know if yeah, you get yeah, me so yeah. that's just it i i think one of the attribute of periodic election is that when a particular administration do not perform up to what they were expected to do you are given a choice to make another decision during that election just like what you have said mr dear that election gives you an opportunity to change what has been happening but uh, we have seen that yes and the election was done yeah but <laughs> it changed though there is change but is the change positive or is it negative because uh, uh, is a case of we have moved from frying pan to fire yes election gives us the the opportunity to make a change but it depends on what type of change that we invest on and that's our put in a question and that is how do changes in government yes how do changes in government leadership following elections affect nigeria's economy um nigeria's economy we look at it why because take for instance now we're talking about the electricity tariff cyber security levy mm-hmm. rising cost in living just to mention a few 
how solar items are skyrocketing on a daily basis. Okay. Now, when it comes to the Nigerian economy now, who actually controls it? It is the government of the day. And that government of the day was brought in by a political party. And that political party was voted for by the electorate. Now, a system of government whereby uh, they bring in an administration and they bring in their own policies. Those policies now, we look at them, how will they impact on the populace? Will it be negative? Will it be stifling? Will it be positive? These are things we need to even look at. So a situation whereby we had, for instance, the PDP, which was running the country for close to 16 years from 1999 until it took over until it was overthrown by the APC. There was continuity. Okay. They had their own system of governance. Now you look at the APC now, which has come on board in 2023 now. Mm -hmm. It's a drastic overhaul. So that overhaul now will now begin to affect the citizens. If you look at it yeah. now coming down to a uh, minute uh, niche let's use lagos state for instance pdp has never dominated lagos state lagos state began with the action congress and that has been the party now they merged with the cpc which was then flagged by buari most of the time that's also why it became the apc now as it became the apc since then it has mm -hmm. still been dominating up till now and the policies which are in place concerning Lagos, there has been continuity. Now, a situation whereby there is no continuity, the Labour Party or the PDP takes over Lagos State miraculously. That is where the economy will now begin to be stifled. Why? Because the policies of the APC will totally be different from policies of the PDP or Labour Party. Okay. I will ask this one thing. You have made your point and they are very good. I'll ask this one thing because there, there was this um, um, trending line that he's inexperienced. Yeah. They were saying a particular candidate is inexperienced. How long has he been in, uh, in the game? And I just want to ask, does how long one has been in the game determine their efficiency? Well, um, <laughs> election is a political race. And if it's called a race, it has to be a game. And in any game, you must have team players. Okay. Now, let's say, for instance, at the federal level, you have the executive council. He has his ministers. Those are people working for him. He is just the ceremonial figure that is to be thrown out there. Likewise, the state governor too. He has a state executive council. So these are the people who are going to be giving him advice on how to run the government. If these people are not there, he begins to run a one-man show. It therefore means it's a unitary system of government which is likened to military but okay. this is democracy everyone has a voice and that's a feature of democracy so you can speak of it's not a case of uh fr there's freedom of speech but freedom after speech i cannot assure it's not you guaranteed it's not guaranteed it's not a military regime but here you can exercise your freedom of expression your freedom of speech so you speak up you never can tell whether that particular speech that uh minister has made mm. will actually influence the decisions of the president the president will just need to sign down sign the bill okay 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 i think you're saying something but it's quite is a bit different from what i'm saying yes you you talk but we are we are saying something in respect to what has happened in the past in the last election a particular candidate i will repeat myself okay <laughs> was... okay okay now i get the cue now okay if he's saying he's inefficient in what regard we should we be looking at it now that's another question okay so is it in terms of uh mental capacity or is it in no, terms of they are physical saying, health they are talking generality? about how long the other person has been in the game that this person is just a boy he just came into politics some years ago compared to our papa that has been there so you cannot just wake up and say that ah this person that just started the other day is going to perform more than the other person so my question okay, now no, is, i think i get it yes now. yes um let's not restrict it to elections now okay um, it's a case of uh this african notion or psyche that uh, an older person is more experienced than a younger one yes so a situation there. whereby uh someone has been there for years a younger person can come on board and use technology to overtake that person. Okay. So it's a question of, it's not how long, but how far and how well. That's another question. Okay. Uh, that's another thing, rather. Okay, okay. So Grace, what do you have to say okay, about this? Uh, that, that last question you asked, 
uh, before I go uh, to the uh, what's it called the first one you asked. Mm. So about uh, the efficiency of any prospective uh, leader, I think in politics there is what is called starting from the grassroots. Do you get? Yes. Starting from the grassroots. So if you you did not start from the grassroots, no, we we cannot. We can. I'm I'm not being biased now. I'm not being sentimental. Yes, yes. But if you start from the grassroots, we already we already we, we you already put you have already been put in check to know this is your ability. This is what you have done before. At at least let's we have seen your records. Yes. So I think that is where the citizens are coming coming from, not any okay, other. Okay, but way. the other person i don't want to call names because okay. i don't want to take sides okay the other inexperienced okay inexperienced. has been mm. <laughs> has politics. been into politics okay has good records and people that has been under him people that have been under him rather they have testified that this man is a good man and his works are straight but then we are looking at the other side we are seeing we are seeing a man with so many, so many records, questionable characters, though they are just alleged. Yes, we are not sure, but then there is a dent on his name. Uh, uh, we, we can't really put that at heart in the sense that it's a uh, political propaganda. So uh, you can say anything just okay. to defeat your, okay. your uh, opponent. So what, what I want to ask next is, is the how long in the game, the how long, that's a term now, is the how long in the game representing and that is why i use that word starting from the grassroots mm. so we already see your record the, the how the the length of your being in the game is not necessary but mm. you started from the grass so let us see your roots okay let's see the root of where you are coming from let us see the 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 track record you get i i don't i just as you say i don't want to you know you know they built they (laughs) built lagos they built lagos Uh, so uh, i don't i'm not seeing nigeria getting built Uh, they are not built they are not seeing but like they built lagos because they have been in the game Mm -hmm. so what happened what happened to building nigeria uh, and that is that is that uh, i think that is the uh, uh, essence of his propaganda and his man- manifesto you thank god you said now that the beauty lagos so that is what is out there that p- the people can see okay you as the opponent that they are they are trying to uh trade on your face I'll that be, you, the opponent would have said uh, i built uh, an umbrella uh-huh, so the, <laughs> you, it's just political propaganda and uh bl- backlash that, that's just it okay okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah. politics is a dirty game you know okay. you can say anything just you can you can drag yourself in the world uh, just to achieve what you want okay what do we have to say about bodies that are that are in charge of elections but then they are doing things that are discouraging the electorate we saw what happened you know i thank god i so much thank god for the internet it's not when you will hear that they say this we saw these things with our eyes that you will come to a particular um what was it called poll and they will tell you that if you know you're going to vote for this but let me not see you here let me but at the end of the day people expected that this body that is in charge of election was going to say something in regards with respect to what has happened but they made people look like a fool even our lop 46 they just they just ignored us as if nothing happened this these things played before our very eye they cannot say that they were doctorated or something something you cannot even cook that up so what did they do because sometimes it just takes you to say something in order to encourage people even if you're not going to make that change say something about it but this body made people look as if like they were fools you do you don't even know what you're talking about even during uh, at that place i was i was i i was watching the television that day and i was like what is happening <laughs> she, she these people they why not i be i be we are not seeing a word so what do you have to say about bodies that are being like held like they are supposed to be responsible for everything that is going on in order to ensure free and fair election but at the end of the day they come up with excuses and they disappointed Nigerians. What do you have to say for them? 
Well, actually, uh, bodies which are saddled with the responsibilities of taking care of uh, elections, I want to believe you are referring to the electoral umpire. Let me just to say INEC. So, yes. INEC, yeah. INEC. Yeah. Now, a situation whereby INEC on his own part presents itself like some toothless bulldog. There's need for them to, I will say, review the Electoral Act of 2022 to make them more efficient, whereby there are anomalies and irregularities from either the party agents who are imposing that they are party or forcefully imposing that, okay, citizens must vote their party into government. So it borders on INEC now to review their Electoral Act to make sure that when elections are going to be taking place, their credibility can actually be like, you know, accounted for by observers, just to mention Human Rights Watch, Serap right. and the, and, yeah. uh, and the yeah. likes. Now, INEC on his own part, for instance, okay, let me liken it to one of the paramilitaries, the NSCDC. They were not carrying weapons before, but when they were always abused and maltreated, they mm -hmm. started arming them with weapons. So if we can have an INEC police, different from the Nigerian police force, to make sure that maybe hooliganism is checkmated, I think that would be on the right track. Different from the Nigerian police. Different yeah, from the Nigerian that, police. That, that hits the point because one of the videos I saw, a Nigerian police was actually there. Did I say a Ni Nigerian policeman? We are there looking at them and they did nothing. So I don't know. I don't know their use. I don't know what they were even doing there, if not to check things like that and stop them. But they were there. So when you said uh, and the police, maybe there will be something different. And this is just and um, your so opinion is so yeah, your suggestion. And if they can look into it, they can do something about it, and we progress. Grace. Yes, uh, talking about uh, civic uh, activism, mm. uh, we cannot just base it on just INEC. EFCC is there too. Okay. I, I, because the last election, I, I see EFCC involving in it where maybe excess of um, spending from the uh, prospective uh, leaders. Yes. So EFCC are there too. So the, uh, uh Civic activism, they should be like a watchdog. But it's unfortunate in Nigeria, they are bulldogs, just as <laughs> they have said. <laughs> so they are, it keeps an eye on elected officials. Mm. Yeah, making sure they are doing their job well and representing the people. You know, I, I said they are watchdog. Mm. So when politicians might think no one is watching, at least the, no one is watching or we the citizen we cannot just stand up and speak they should be our our voice mm. they should be our watchdog so uh, talking about this i think of it in i i think the last uh presidential election i was fortunate to partake in the uh i uh, exercise yeah i could i in in the, in the polling unit where i was i could remember some of the I don't want to mention any party. <laughs> okay. A particular party will be some of the candidates or the what do they call it? Uh, agents. Mm. We we come to, we come uh, before you and tell you that no no voting for this party, no election for them. And okay. and and we see some uh, civic activists uh, activists there, which which are the police policemen. Yeah. They are part of those uh, civic activists. Yeah. So. They were looking. They like did I, they did nothing. They practically did nothing. So I don't <laughs> like the Nigeria have like <laughs> we have work to do. I actually well, I was yeah, actually we coming to, to the do. part of that yeah, civic are, activism. Yeah, we but have work to do. You have just concluded, summarized, and we, this is to tell us that all of them are in the same. We boat. still have a long way to go. I think we are only shouting. We need change, I, but I don't see us. Oh, we are ready because for the, the change. body that is supposed to even check on the other person is doing the same thing as them so all of them are in the same boat so <laughs> is it that there's no hope for us at all oh god yeah <laughs> let's see be optimistic <laughs> okay <laughs> just like i said yeah opportunity do come but once they say but not for elections in nigeria they come every four years Definitely. and if you should see that opportunity don't be discouraged 
yes that your one vote that your one vote is actually going to make a difference and this we are we are coming to the end of the podcast and we cannot leave you without giving you something to take away with so mr Diawa, what do you want to give to our listeners what should they take away from today's episode um from today's episode fine we're talking about uh, election of course it's directed to the electorate the only thing i'll say is for them to be informed concerning the elections acknowledging the fact that their vote is their right irrespective of we know yes their selection and not election their vote is still their right they should uh, i'll say bury voter apathy and just come out and exercise their civic responsibility okay grace yeah i adding to what i'm not adding it's just a rephrase of what you have said <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah oh uh, taking home to or uh, what uh, i will give uh, to the audience leadership matters yeah leadership matter matters in the essence of who we vote for who we regard as our leader uh say it or how the community how the country how the society will be who get elected can change things practically then policy shifts new leaders bring new rules we should know that mm-hmm. so if two candidates are involved or involved sorry put them in check put mm-hmm. them in check because new leaders new rules so no everybody's record no everybody's agenda no everybody's manifesto then the last one your voice counts your voice can't so every every vote can't in deciding your your leader or your uh, every um vote can't Come in on. deciding this outcome what the country will be for the past four years it sometimes eight years with the system of government we are running four years so if they give you one even if it is one carton of okay. indo <laughs> <laughs> just buy your votes you Remember, you will not eat one carton of Indomie for four years. Mm. Even for one month, you can eat one carton of Indomie. So, re- rethink, retrace, and I don't know, just conclude that. Okay, okay. Dear vigilant listeners, we have had all of that. And I will say it again. Your one vote matters a lot. It will go a long way. And let me tell you, in Nigeria, if you are thinking that when he gets there and underperforms, we are going to impeach him. It doesn't work here. It doesn't work here. Election is just your one opportunity to make that change. And don't deprive yourself and others of that enjoyment, of that improvement. Please, when next we come across this opportunity, let us grab it with everything in us. Let us grab it with all our power so that we can make this change and see this country progress. Thank you. We've come to the end of the podcast. And do well to subscribe to all our channels on YouTube, on Spotify. And thank you so much. See you next time. Bye.